welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is samantha and today we are going to talk about my book annotating method so before we get start started yeah words before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also go ahead and follow me over on instagram it's a great time we talk about books planning just all the fun stuff all the important stuff you know how it is so anyway now let's head over to the books show you some of these I want to talk about my annotating method. My annotating method, everyone does it differently. However, um, I do it in a way that's important to me and memorable to me. The way that I had started annotating was like way back. And I would say maybe like middle school, elementary school, I had started annotating. And at the time I didn't really know I was annotating. I just said like, wow, that sounds like an important plot point. Let me d d d write it down or make a note. And then I really got into poetry. Emily Dickinson's actually my favorite poet in the entire world. And I would just like annotate and decipher and pull apart these poems. And, and it was just beautiful to me. So that's truly when I first started annotating, but I'm going to show you some of my annotations from like recent reads um, and they're all reads that I have pretty popular and everybody's like, you know, all up in it. So The Wall of Winnipeg and Me was a book that I've already talked about quite a few times on my Instagram because I love this story and I'm rereading it for sure. But as you can see, like there's so much going on, a little bit ASMR. <laughs> there's so much going on here. Um, but I was very, very specific with what I was doing with this book. So, um, at this point I didn't write in my books. Um, I put sticky tabs, which like sticky notes to write in my books. For those of you, of course, who aren't like you want to annotate, but you don't want to write in your books. I would highly, highly recommend getting sticky notes, just writing your thoughts, placing it in the book. Cause you can always take it off. Remember it's not in the book. And then if you let a friend borrow it, which I don't like letting people borrow my books because it kind of feels like a journal to me and <laughs> nobody got to read that. I would do these. They also have transparent sticky notes. I've seen them on Amazon. Um, I've never tried those, but I have seen them. They are a thing that's out there. Um, but yeah, these are definitely the way to go and I'll show you. So for Wall of Winnipeg and Me, I did put it on the front cover. I had put main characters, like their names on there, which for this book, it's Vanessa and Aiden. Um, so for this one, for example, I put pink is love, red is passion, green is hate, blue is development, yellow is plot, orange is character development, purple is connection, dark green is angry, and then light purple is I, that I personally love what happens. So as you can see, there's a few light purples in here because I did really love what happens. And... <laughs> This book is awesome. You guys just need to read it. If you're looking for like a slow burn romance that isn't too slow or irritating, like this is it. Like even if there's a part that's irritating, it doesn't entirely bother you. No, this isn't a book review video, but you know, I'm just gotta, I just gotta, I gotta boost this up a little bit. So what I did do and what I'll do is I'll just jump to a tab, um, like a good tab. See right here, um, I didn't write in the book. I just wrote on my sticky notes my thoughts and then it can always come off like here for example um I put wow he really needs her because <laughs> he really does because in this book Vanessa is actually Aiden's his personal assistant um he is in this book's version of the NFL I think they call it the NFO or something like that yeah so it's the NFO here which it's supposed to be the NFL um, and he's Canadian, I believe. So he <sighs> is beautiful. It's, it's, it's a marriage of convenience guys and you know, enemies to lovers. It's got the, it's got the, all the stuff in it, but that's what I did. Um, I annotated with sticky notes specifically in here. Sometimes I put two tabs, um, in the section, <clears throat> excuse me. I put two tabs because, you know, something green was happening and then something dark purple was happening. And if you ever forget, you always have kind of like your guide in the front of the book to remind you if you go back to reread. And to be honest, it's kind of cool when you open the book up again and like you read something and then you're just like, oh, that's what I was thinking there. And you can kind of laugh at it, you know? It's interesting. It's kind of like peeking back into your mind from when you had this read. 
But um, that's what I did for these. At this point, I kind of just got these sticky tabs off of Amazon. All my sticky tabs are off of Amazon. I just more recently decided to be a little more aesthetic with my tabbing. So my tabs look different, like with my more recent reads. But this is how some of them look. Some of them are more tabbed than others because I'll be honest, sometimes the book was just so like captivating that I just, I, I just couldn't put it down. Or maybe I was out in public and I forgot my tabs. For example, another good one was this one. You can look at those tabs. Like there is a lot of tabbing going on here. Oh my gosh, what is it focusing? There's a lot of tabbing going on here. Um, but this was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. And then I did the same thing here. I'll show you. I did it all with a sticky tab. Um, so not they're not always the same in every book. I like to change them up, the colors up, whatever it may be. Um, but this one I did a little differently. I was feeling a little spicy, a little, you know, a little dash of spice, spice. But I was feeling spicy and I wrote in my book. <laughs> but lo and behold, I wrote in pencil <laughs> because I can erase it. I can't bring myself to write in pen, okay? I was only able to do that in like school. That was it. Like my textbooks, I could write in pen. But my book books, I just, I for some reason I can't do it. And I want to so badly because I see so many aesthetic pretty like underlining and drawings. People paint in their books. Like these people out here are just creative as hell. And I just can't do it. I don't know why. But anyway, what I did here was I did like little notes. I underlined some things. Um, these are all just different things that you can do. Talking to myself because you know, I have no friends. Um, but that's what I did. And that's just to assure you underlined like the important things as you can see. I just, for me specifically in this book, there was just so much going on that I just wanted to be able to keep up with it. So my annotations um, really were a little more specific and a little bit more to remember what was going on. So um, for this one, I put specifically like yellow was important, blue was sad, green was plot development, which there's a whole lot of plot development and sad in here. Um, pink was romance, orange was upsetting because a lot of things upset me in this book. <laughs> And then, not like in a bad way, but it was like, oh, why? And then purple was the past because in this book, you kind of just go back and forth from the past to the present. Um, so there was a lot of like jumping back and forth in time in this, but this was also an amazing book. Um, I, I cried at the end of it. Um, I did, like I wish there was a freaking part two to this book because I did cry and it was just like, it was a nice cry. It was like a... This book makes you appreciate your life and what you have in it and just, it's all the feels. Like V. Schwab did a really amazing job with this book. Um, but that's how I annotated this one specifically. Uh, the colors don't always have to be the same. I'm just very inconsistent like that and I'll change up the colors for what I feel is necessary for the book. But there was this one. Um, and these were my more recent reads. I'm actually lying to you. This one right here. Um, the Atlas Six. Now this is the book where I will tell you right now, the annotating wasn't so much to like, say like, oh, I liked this part, I liked that part. No, this, for this book specifically, the annotation was for me to remember what the hell was going on. So I have the second book. I have not read it yet because I had this first one packed away because I was moving. And I said, I can't read the second one until I have this one again because that so much happened is just so, is psychological. There's just a lot of twists and turns and plots and things to remember. The smallest details are so important in this story that I said I cannot read the second one without having this one as reference because I just needed to keep track of everything. So um, for this one, I didn't too much like write in it. I kind of just underlined the important things. Um, because like I said, it just is a very, into, this is a very intellectual story in my opinion. So like red was intellectual, uh, light pink was romance, yellow was important, orange was upsetting, and then blue was plot development. So there was kind of a nice mixture of everything in this book. Um, for example, I did underline the important things like in here, like what characters said, what characters did, um, just things that I kind of knew were going to be uh, necessary and then like it took some notes here and there where I knew somewhere in the story it was just going to resurface 
So that's why I say that you annotate, you should be annotating based on what you're reading. Is it analytical? Is it just fantasy? Is it just like a sweet little romance? And to me, I'll be honest, I don't really annotate sweet little romances. I did annotate book lovers and that gave that book a three star and I kind of felt like I wasted my time annotating it because it was more of like, a, let me just read this because it's just a cute fluffy story. Um, but I really like to annotate books that truly have like a huge plot line, like something that's gonna stand out to me. And the first two did, like Wall of Winnipeg, yeah, was a romance story, but there was just so much depth behind it emotionally between the two characters and like things that they went through growing up that was kind of important and built into who the characters were. So I annotated that one specifically for that. But like, for example, Book Lovers, just it was fluffy and I didn't need to. Like People We Meet on Vacation, which was also, if you don't know, also by Emily Henry, um, I didn't bother. I just read it. It was, it was just, it was one of those reads, you know what I mean? So, um, but this one, this one needed to be annotated. And if you haven't read this book and you're interested in annotating, I would say that this is a book you might want to annotate. Um, but yeah, so just little things like this, um, I put in the clock ticks because that was just kind of like in reference to something else that happened. Um, but yeah, this, this, this is definitely, and so you guys can see right here, I, um, I kind of went all up in it with the annotated. Is it like picking it up on the camera? So like right here, like it was a whole thing. I I made graphs for this one because it was just so important. Um, yeah, it was a it was this book was a trip, man. And then when I found out like book two wasn't didn't come out I think until like last year, and I was just like, what is this? why? Um, but yeah, so this one I specifically annotated with a whole different process, like mind, mind, mind. Um, the next series that I am annotating just because I freaking love it so much and I'm very upset that I waited so long to read it was the series of A Court of Thorns and Roses. Now, I did annotate and I do plan on annotating the whole series. I actually have A Court of Wings and Roses. Yeah, A Court of Wings and Ruin up there that I am currently annotating. And these I kind of tried to specifically annotate in correlation with the book covers um that's what I mean by I got into more aesthetic annotating so as you can see like these annotations um match the book um for this one I did take a lot of notes um just because there's so much going on if you haven't read A Court of Thorns and Roses I highly highly recommend that you do um it's beautiful. I just, I haven't read a series in such a series in such a long time. That's just made me so excited about a world that doesn't really exist. <laughs> and if you know, you know, if you don't read the book and then you'll know. Um, but what I did here was I wrote it on the front cover. So I have all the colored tabs and yes, I did sometimes have to keep going back and forth to remind myself like, what color was this? What color was that? But that's my enjoyment from that. You don't have to use as many colors as I did here, obviously. Uh, you can use three or two or four or five or all of the freaking colors you want. But um, I used this. So I did spice, plot, sad, relate, funny, love, memorable, and character development. Um, because when I first read this, obviously, if you all know, we thought this story was going in one direction. What I ended up doing though, and I'll show you because I was just like a mad woman when it came to this stuff, writing like an idiot right here. As you can tell, like I underlined a whole shit of things and then took notes like a crazy person, like the crazy person that I am. Um, so this was not only out of enjoyment annotating, but it was a kind of like, a remembering type of thing because I knew this was going to be an intense story because there's like how many like seven books or something like that um so right now I'm only on book three and I still have three more to go but that's how I annotated this one and I was kind of glad I did because in this book it references a lot of damage and a lot of um trauma from the first one <laughs> I freaking love this book. I do have a vlog that's going to be coming out very soon where I've read the entire series. And if you see some of my like late night reactions to some of this, I, <laughs> I bet you're going to laugh at me. <laughs> 
But um, A Court of Mist and Fury, I kind of annotated it a little bit differently because I kind of got the gist of what was going on and like what direction this book was going in. Well, the story, not direction of the book. I had feelings already from when a certain character was introduced in the first book. Like when this character was introduced, I was like, Zaddy? Zaddy. There was something in me. I just, I don't know. I have those bad guy vibes that I just, I'm attracted to bad guys. I don't know. If you know, you know. But um, the way I did this one, I should just make a whole like Court of Thorns and Roses rant video. Um, this one I used different tabs, obviously. And I went and used um, such things like uh, plot twists slash shocking. Like that was just the whole thing. I have a whole sticky tab that says what? Like <laughs> I made it more personal because I personally started enjoying the story so much. So right here, if you all this underlining um and i specifically had from the first book i kind of saw like wait things are starting to resurface from the first book so little things that stood out to me in the second book i continued um to underline because i felt like it's going to show up in the third book which a lot of stuff already has see so i just did a lot of writing and i keep writing in pencil i'm not going to dare myself in these books to write in pen. I might do it with another book that maybe I'm like not too crazy about. Um, but yeah, these books, however, I would never let anyone in my life read because, oh, my daughter took notes too. Look at that, that's cute. Um, I would never let anyone in my life read because of like just some of the notes. Like if you are one of my friends on Bookstagram, I would definitely let you read my notes on here because you'll just get it. <laughs> and you probably have the same notes as I do. But I did correspond the tabs to the color of the book. So that is my annotating process. It's nothing crazy. Like I said, it's very specific to what it is that I'm reading. I try not to overcomplicate it unless it's an overcomplicated story. For example, if you're reading like Lord of the Rings, <sighs> which I have, um, I've actually read it twice. I want to read it a third time because it's like, that's the type of story, like every time you read it, there's something new and important that pops up. So with that one, I would definitely say you might want to annotate, um, but I get my sticky tabs from Amazon. I'll have them listed in the description below. Um, yeah, so I'll have them listed in the description below. And what ends up, uh, I end up doing is I get kind of like the aesthetic looking ones, but you can also get like those bright colored ones, like the ones I showed you in my books earlier. Um, what I like about these though, and I'm not fancy because I'm the type of person that will use a freaking scrunchie to save my place in a book, but it's got this little, um, flat surface. It holds the tabs for you. I use them as bookmarks. I actually have one in my, um, Court of Wings and Ruin right now as a bookmark. And they send you quite a few of them. Like there's one, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven. So it came with seven of these. And I think I pay like $9.99 for them, which really isn't bad. They stick great. I don't bother writing on them because I don't feel like it's gonna stick, but I'm sure if you have like a Sharpie fine point or something like that, it'll be fine. Um, but that's what I use. And then when it comes to my annotating and like my reading journals, um, I have this whole entire packet in here with all the pens and stuff that I use. I had gotten um, these highlighters because I do want to start using them in some of my annotations. These are from Write Tech. Um, they're really cute. It's got a pointed end for underlining and then it's got like the chiseled highlighter end for highlighting, which is what I want to start using them for. So if you are someone that's into highlighting in your books and writing, I want to be you. I want to be that girl, but right now I'm not. I'm baby steps. <laughs> I'm writing in pencil. <laughs> I have to be proud of myself for that. Um, but you can get these, maybe they come in a pack of 10. You get all these cute colors um, and you just use them. They, they don't smear, which is really nice, really easy to use. And then I also have my Rytec click pens. That is my process for how I annotate my books. It's really not complicated. Um, I know a lot of people think there's like this huge science to it, but in reality, it's really not. It's just what you enjoy reading, what you enjoy doing to your books. Your books, I look at my books as my journals. Um, no one's gonna understand how I feel when I'm reading a certain story. 
So I like to remind myself, I have a lot of books from middle school that I wrote in and then like I'll reread them and I'll be like, oh my God, I had no business reading this. <laughs> if you are interested in annotating and you wanna give it a try, I 100% am rooting you on. Go ahead and do it. There's no harm in it. If you are a little nervous about it, I do recommend just doing it in pencil or of course doing um, the sticky note way like I did with my first book um, that I showed you. Uh, that's gonna be the best way to do it. Or if you have too many thoughts and too many notes that you wanna write down for something, write in your book and use these. There's no harm in it. And then there's also, like I said, the transparent ones. Um, but yeah, so that is how I annotate my books. There's really no crazy science behind it. It's really super easy and super fun once you start getting into it. You don't have to stress yourself out and annotate every freaking book that you read because that's just gonna give you a headache and it's gonna suck the fun out of reading. There's so many people that I've met that they've done that and I'm just like, girl, no, stop stressing yourself out. Just annotate the books that you feel are pretty important. I've gone about 30% into books before I realized, you know what, I think I wanna annotate this. Go ahead and do that. You don't have to overstress yourself. You don't have to do like these crazy annotations like I did here. This was just for me personally, I wanted to do it. But don't stress your out, yourself out, especially if you're new to reading in general. Reading is a beautiful world and welcome to it. I just want to make sure that you guys are getting the most out of your reading journey, out of your life, out of your reading life, because it's so important that you're enjoying the books that you're reading and you're not making yourself have a reading burnout because those suck. Reading slumps are the worst things to get into, especially if you love to read. I was in a reading slump for so long because I was just like, I feel like I've read everything that I can read. I feel like I, I've read every genre, like I wanted something new. And it eventually finds me, of course, after you don't read for a while, which if you guys read often, you know what that feels like. But that is my process for annotating my books. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you have any tips on how you annotate or if you do things differently, go ahead and leave it in the comment section. I'm always interested in seeing how other people annotate their books. These are some of my favorite videos to watch on BookTube because everyone does things differently and it is so much fun to bounce ideas off of each other and learn more about how I can improve my annotating process or make it easier, you know what I mean? Anyway, that is all I have for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Your subscribing does make me feel very happy and it gets me excited to pump out more videos just like this one. And if you haven't, make sure to follow me over on Instagram at Life with Lattes. And until the next time, get cozy with a good book and I will see you in my next video. Bye.